Three minutes ago, scientists detected a dramatic spike in volcanic ash from Ethiopia's Haile Gubi volcano, a giant that has slept for 12,000 years. Fresh satellite data confirms the eruption has surged into a new, more powerful phase, with ash rising to jet altitudes and spreading far beyond Africa. What happens next could affect millions, but almost no one saw this escalation coming. Haile Gubi, a stratovolcano rising from Ethiopia's Afar region, has erupted for the first time in nearly 12,000 years. The event began on November 23, 2025, catching scientists and communities off guard. The Ethiopian Geological Survey, the country's national authority on volcanic hazards, confirmed the eruption after sensors detected a sudden plume of ash and gas breaking through the summit. The mountain, long considered dormant, had shown no recorded activity in modern history. Its last known eruption predates all written records, placing it among the rarest reawakenings ever documented in the region. Haile Gubi sits within the East African Rift, a geologically restless zone where the African continent is slowly splitting apart. Most eruptions in Afar come from younger, more active volcanoes like Erta Ale. In contrast, Haile Gubi's silence stretched across millennia, making this eruption both a scientific surprise and a potential case study in rift volcanism. Early reports from the Geological Survey describe a towering ash column, dense enough to blot out the sun in nearby settlements. The initial plume climbed rapidly, signaling a forceful release of pressure built up over thousands of years. Confirmation came as ground teams relayed data to Addis Ababa, where volcanologists verified the event using seismic instruments and satellite imagery. Within hours, international monitoring agencies began tracking the ash cloud's movement. For Ethiopia, the eruption of Haile Gubi is more than a local emergency. It is a rare geological awakening, unfolding in real time, with consequences that could ripple far beyond the Afar desert. Sentinel-5P Tropomi instrument recorded a fresh sulfur dioxide spike at 0310 coordinated universal time, pinpointing a surge in volcanic gas directly above Haile Gubi. This is the clearest satellite confirmation yet that the eruption has entered a new phase. The sulfur dioxide column stretches for hundreds of kilometers with concentrations far above background levels. Less than an hour later, MODIS and VIR sensors tracked the ash cloud rising again to nearly 14 kilometers, matching the altitude of commercial airliners and signaling renewed explosive power. Calypso LiDAR data provided an independent check, slicing through the atmosphere to confirm the vertical reach and density of the ash. The combined data sets leave little doubt. This is not a fading event. It is a measurable escalation. Simon Karn, a leading expert in volcanic remote sensing, interprets the Tropomi results plainly. The sulfur dioxide data is a clear indicator of a new phase. We are seeing fresh magma degassing. Each new satellite pass brings updated overlays, time-stamped and color-coded, showing ash and gas plumes expanding eastward. The 0310 Coordinated Universal Time Sulfur Dioxide Spike is especially significant. It coincides with ground-based sensor alerts and precedes a rapid growth in the ash column. These measurements are not just scientific milestones. They are the primary evidence driving global response. The escalation is now a matter of record, visible from space and measured in real time. The next challenge falls to those who must respond as the eruption impact grows. Airspace controllers across three continents are now on high alert. The London Volcanic Ash Advisory Center issued a red bulletin at 0320 UUTC, warning airlines to avoid affected routes above East Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. Within minutes, India's Directorate General of Civil Aviation confirmed at least 11 flight cancellations, with Air India and Akasa Air suspending all departures bound for the Gulf. Reroute corridors stretch from Oman to Pakistan, as carriers scramble to divert aircraft away from the ash zone. Ash particles at 14 kilometers threaten aircraft at cruising altitude forcing pilots to shift flight paths hundreds of miles off course. International bodies ICAO and IATA have released global advisories, instructing airlines to monitor real-time satellite overlays and avoid any sector flagged by the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center. The risk is not theoretical. Volcanic ash acts like sandpaper inside jet engines, melting, clogging, and sometimes causing total engine failure. Airlines in the Middle East and South Asia have begun rerouting traffic through alternative airspace, stacking up delays and stranding thousands of passengers. 
Every hour brings new advisories as the ash cloud continues to drift and expand, reshaping global aviation in real time. Airlines are rerouting, flights are delayed, and thousands of passengers remain stranded at airports. Air traffic managers are coordinating shared corridors and holding patterns, while airlines update passengers and ground their affected fleets until the ash threat subsides. In Saha village, Mohammed Ibrahim listens for updates on a crackling radio as a gray haze settles over the landscape. His home, like hundreds across Afar, is coated in a gritty layer of volcanic ash. By midday, daylight fades to a dim twilight. Livestock wander through fields stripped of clean grass, their coats dusted and their eyes watering. The air tastes of sulfur and dust. Muhammad's family covers their faces with scarves, but coughing fits echo through the house. The Ethiopian Public Health Institute has issued repeated warnings. Fine ash can trigger breathing problems, especially for children and the elderly. Water sources that were once clear now run cloudy. Local Red Cross teams travel between settlements, handing out masks and advising families how to filter drinking water. With each hour of ashfall, the pressure on communities grows. Farmers worry about losing entire herds, while health workers brace for a surge in respiratory cases. For many in Afar, the eruption is not a distant event on satellite maps. It is a daily struggle for clean air, safe water, and the hope that the ash will soon let up. Haley Gubi sits at the heart of the East African Rift, a vast scar stretching across Ethiopia where the continent is slowly tearing itself apart. Here, tectonic plates drift away from each other by up to 19 millimeters per year, creating deep fractures in the Earth's crust. These rift zones act as open doors for magma, allowing molten rock from the mantle to rise through faults and fissures. Geophysicist Derek Keir, who studies rifting in afar, explains that this process can drive sudden, unpredictable eruptions even at volcanoes with no recent history. The 2005 Dabahu event, just 60 kilometers north, opened a fissure nearly 500 meters long as magma forced its way upward, causing the ground to shift by more than half a meter in days. For Haley Gubby, the absence of modern seismic or deformation data means scientists are working from satellite clues and rift analogs. The eruption's intensity suggests either deep mantle, magma, or a volatile rich pocket closer to the surface, but without direct measurements, the exact source remains uncertain. What is clear is that rift mechanics, constant stretching, faulting, and magma movement set the stage for this rare awakening. In a region shaped by geologic forces over millions of years, Haley Gubi's eruption is a reminder that even the quietest volcanoes can be jolted back to life by the restless earth beneath. Clive Oppenheimer, a leading volcanologist, frames the challenge ahead with measured caution. When a volcano reawakens after 12,000 years, the range of possible futures stretches from regional disruption to rare, planet-shaping events. For now, the most immediate risk sits with aviation. In 2010, Ajaf Yalajakul's moderate eruption in Iceland forced the cancellation of 100,000 flights across Europe, stranding millions and costing billions. Haley Gubi's ash column has already climbed higher than Ajaf Yalajakul's, reaching altitudes where commercial jets cruise. Airlines in India, Pakistan, and the Gulf have rerouted or grounded flights, responding to real-time advisories as the ash cloud drifts unpredictably. But the question of broader impact depends on what happens next. If Haley Gubi's eruption continues to launch sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere, the consequences could escalate. Mount Pinatubo in 1991 injected about 20 teragrams of sulfur dioxide above 20 kilometers, cooling the planet by nearly half a degree and altering weather patterns for years. By contrast, most eruptions, even dramatic ones, do not sustain that level of output or altitude. Initial satellite data from Haley Gubi suggest a powerful but brief event with sulfur dioxide totals still uncertain. Oppenheimer notes that only repeated high altitude pulses over days or weeks would raise the risk of climate effects. For now, scientists are watching the data, alert to any sign that the eruption is entering a pattern seen only once or twice each century. Right now, one volcanic plume is redrawing flight maps and testing global warning systems in real time. As ash drifts across borders, the world is reminded. Earth's forces do not recognize boundaries, and our ability to respond is only as strong as the science we choose to heed. Stay alert.